Hi, it's Ian here. Welcome back to another episode of More Clients TV Q&A. Uh, today's question is from Christina. It's a great question about how to make an effective brochure or leaflet for a service business. So we'll get straight to that after the break. See you there. Hi, welcome back to More Clients Q&A. Ask Ian stuff about marketing and sales. Feel a bit like a newsreader or maybe even a chat show host, kind of Jay Leno or David Letterman. My papers, uh, maybe do a, a top 10 later on. Um, today's question, as I said, is from Christina. It's about how to make an effective brochure or leaflet for a service business. Um, a lot of service businesses don't really use brochures and leaflets these days. I don't most my brochures, essentially my website. But for those that do, here are some kind of tips to make it more effective. And they're largely based on some stuff from back in the 60s and 70s. These aren't brochures, these are adverts, but they're a great prototype for brochures. These are from David Ogilvy um, and Ogilvy and Mather, the agency. Ogilvy, of course, the king of Madison Street, um, the original madman, um, immensely successful uh, um, advertising guy. And what uh, what these are, these are Ogilvy's, what he called his house ads. So these are ad this is advertising he did for his own agency to promote their own services. And these were one-page ads, but the, the couple of key things about them. Firstly, they don't look like ads. This first one is on how to create advertising that sells. There's how to create financial advertising that sells, how to launch new products, how to create industrial advertising that sells. They had other ones on TV, at TV advertising, etc. So they don't look like ads. And that's the first thing. People are interested in reading them because it doesn't just look like something that's going to sell them some stuff. When you get into them, they are full of useful information. The, um, the How to Create Advertising That Sells one begins, Ogilvy and Mathers created over 1.48 billion worth of advertising and spent 4.9 million tracking the results. Here, with all the dogmatism of brevity, are 38 of the things we've learned. And it then goes on to give 38 of their best tips on advertising, from kind of print and TV, about images, about copywriting, about psychology, about research. Um, same with the industrial advertising and the product launches, etc. And they're full of statistics statistics, they're full of examples, really practical stuff. So if you're at all interested in advertising, you're going to keep these, you're going to cut these out of the magazine or the, um, the, the newspaper they were in, and you're going to keep them and keep coming back to them. Now, most advertising, of course, we just throw away. Um, but if we think something's valuable, we keep it, we hoard it. So it's taking advantage of that. Thirdly, of course, because there's really useful, valuable information and insights in here, it really builds the credibility. What Ogilvy said was the purpose of my ads was to project the agency as knowing more about advertising than other agencies. They didn't want to be seen as super creative, etc. They wanted to be seen as knowing more about advertising, particularly being quite scientific about it than any other agencies. My ads not only promised useful information, they provided it and they worked. You can do the same thing with your ads. I mean, here's a, a recent example. This is a brochure. It's for Money Week magazine, which is a financial publication here in the UK. This is a brochure for it that dropped out of the middle of the week, which is a magazine I subscribe to that gives a summary of the week's news. And it looks like a magazine. It doesn't look like an advert. So I'm immediately interested in this headline, dump these four toxic investments now with why house prices are set to plummet on page three, the euro, a disaster waiting to happen on page six, three survival moves you should make immediately, page 10. And when you get into it, it is full of useful information about bad investments, good investments, what you should get rid of, um, survival strategies you should be doing. It's not until I think page 14 that they start talking about uh, the investment magazine itself and why you should buy that. So this is the sort of thing, as demonstrated by the fact this is from 2010 and I've kept it. I'm not even an investor, but I just thought, man, I better keep that just in case I might need it. And so I've kept it filed away. Um, your brochures and leaflets can be exactly the same. If they follow the Ogilvy model and have really valuable information in them, then people will keep them and keep returning to them rather than throwing them away. And then when they need your services, they'll have them on their shelves and they'll be able to get them. What normally happens is if people don't need your services immediately, as people very rarely do, brochure goes in the bin. Even if they don't need your services, this is useful information. We keep it. When they do need them, they pull them off the shelves. They have the contact information. 
got a great call to action as well in each of them. Um, the call to action on some of these is to um, write to them and they'll send you a more detailed um, information on advertising in different sectors. So, of course, not only does it gauge your interest, it finds out which sector you're in and they can send you some useful information and follow up there. Or in some cases, they offer a presentation, for example, about their, their mathematical model that predicts new product potential for the, the launching new products one. With Money Week, simple follow-up. You um, can get a free free trial for three weeks. And if, if you like it, if you don't like it, you can cancel. If you like it, you can keep paying and, uh, and get the regular subscription. So in your brochure or leaflet, make sure that unlike 99% of all brochures and leaflets, you have a call to action too. Um, that that could be for a free strategy session with you. It could be to get a, a bigger lead magnet in the covering the topics you cover in your in your brochure. But make sure there's something, um, a call to action in there that offers them something useful as a follow up. And of course, your contact information, description of your services, etc. So should they need you, they can contact you. So that's really my big tips for brochures and leaflets. Don't make them look like everybody else's brochures and leaflets never mind the stock images the you know all the, all the fancy words etc um, use the ogilvy model right back from the 60s of cramming useful valuable information into your advertising or your brochure and your leaflet people will want to read it they'll keep it it'll influence them because you'll get your credibility across through it much better than you ever could by saying you're great you're demonstrating it um, through the useful information you have in it and that's the best thing you can send someone as a brochure or a leaflet. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if you do want to get copies of these, by the way, the kind folks at Ogilvy have made the avail them available on a Pinterest page. You can just go and look at them, along with a lot of other classic Ogilvy ads. Some really great advertising info in here, by the way. Even though, even though it's 30, 40 years old, much of it is still valid today. You can get hold of that. I'll put a link just below this, um, this video. And... Uh, lost myself there and uh, if you want to ask your a question yourself then you can just uh, drop me an email if you're an email subscriber and if you're not you can subscribe pretty much anywhere on the site and then drop me an email so i'll see you soon cheers